podcast, we'll talk about bone growth and development. Ossification is the name for formation of bone. There are two kind of categories or times of ossification, which are initial growth and then maintenance. So we're talking about initial growth. Our body first needs to make a bone, and then we need to make that bone bigger as the organism uh, grows. We also need to maintain our bone, and we'll talk about that um, at the very end of this screencast in order to maintain homeostasis as well as just kind of refresh the bone um, throughout our entire adulthood. There are three types of bone cells that we'll talk about. So we've talked about osteocytes in other screencasts. Osteocytes are mature bone cells that are living within the bone. In bone growth and development, we're going to focus on two other types of bone cells osteoblasts, which build bone. You can remember blasts build. And then osteoclasts, which are going to break down the bone. There are two main ways that your bones grow or form. There's intramembranous bone growth in which the bones begin as sheets of connective tissue, and then the bone will form within the membrane, as the name indicates, intra within membrane or membranous membrane, um, and then there's endochondral bone growth. In endochondral bone growth, which is inside of a cartilage model, the bone is going to replace a hyaline cartilage model. Most of our bones, specifically our long bones, are endochondral in the way that they grow, and so we are just going to focus on endochondral bone growth for the rest of this screencast. In talking about bone growth, we'll first talk about how the bone itself is initially formed. There are two stages of ossification overall. Primary ossification occurs in the diaphysis, and secondary ossification occurs in the epiphyses. When we look at this um, progression here, we can see we start as a cartilage model, and then the bone growth as you can see, is going to begin in the center of the diaphysis and work its way out towards the ends of the diaphysis, then it repeats in the epiphyses. When we are talking about ossification, we'll start with a cartilage model. The cartilage is then broken down and a periosteum forms on the outside of the bone. The periosteum is essential for bringing nutrients to the area. Osteoblasts are going to then build spongy bone, and then they're going to build compact bone. Again, this starts in the center of the diaphysis and then moves its way out towards the ends of the bone. Keep in mind that the, bone, the model was fully cartilage, but the bone will have a medullary canal that will have blood vessels inside. Once the diaphysis is ossified, we have secondary ossification in which the process repeats in the epiphyses. So what was fully a cartilage model will now be made into bone, but cartilage remains in two spots. Articular cartilage stays at the ends of the bones. As we remember, articular cartilage is smooth hyaline cartilage that's going to help the bones glide against other bones in a joint. And then the epiphyseal plates or the growth plates. So the epiphyseal plates will remain cartilage until um, they are ossified closed and the organism is done growing. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So after the bones are initially formed, we have to take these itty bitty baby bones and eventually make them adult bones. Our bones are going to grow in two kind of directions. They're going to grow in length and they're going to grow in circumference. Longer bones don't really help us if they stay really thin because they're not supportive. We need them to also get wider or have a greater circumference so that they can be supportive still. Longitudinal growth occurs at the epiphyseal plates. What's going to happen here is that the ex uh, cartilage is going to divide and elongate. The cartilage of the epiphyseal plates is going to um, push out a little bit, so that's going to start lengthening the bone. Extracellular matrix is then going to form, which is going to push the bone longer. Calcium salts will then accumulate on that matrix in order to harden it. Osteoclasts will come in and slowly break down that matrix so that osteoblasts can come in and lay down the bone. So the extracellular matrix is like a framework 
um, that then we break down the framework to put the real bone there that we want. This is going to continue until the epiphyseal plates ossify closed and this ossification, this final ossification or closing of the epiphyseal plates uh, is signaled by sex hormones that are changing in their levels during puberty. Next, we have appositional growth, and this is the growth that we talked about in terms of circumference. What happens here is that compact bone is deposited by the osteoblasts on the outside of the bone, just under the periosteum. So first, this really thin wall here will get thicker. Then osteoclasts will erode the bone on the inside in order to form or increase the medullary canal. So we first have to add the support to the outside and then we can take away from the inside. Once we have the medullary canal or we've widened the medullary canal, it will then fill with bone marrow. So that is an overview of how bones grow initially both how the initial bone is formed from a cartilage model and endochondral bone growth, and then how that bone gets longer and gets wider. Now, even throughout our life, but even including through adulthood, our bones continue to develop and we are uh, maintaining homeostasis of the bone as well as of calcium levels in our entire body. Throughout your lifetime, about 5% of your bone matrix is exchanged or refreshed each year. So osteoblasts and osteoclasts continue to remodel the bone uh, throughout your lifespan. Span. Hormones are going to control the regulation of calcium levels within your uh, bones. Remember that calcium um, is stored in the bones. And so our bones are sort of like a bank for calcium. There are other processes within our body that need the calcium. And so if we need calcium because our blood calcium is low, we're going to pull that calcium out of the bones. If we have extra calcium because our blood calcium levels are too high, we're going to deposit that in the bones. Resorption is the name of the process by which osteoclasts are going to break down the bone to release the calcium. Deposition is the process by which osteoblasts deposit more calcium to make more bone matrix. So if we look at our feedback loop over here, if calcium levels get too high, we're um, going, the receptors in the thyroid gland are going to dis detect this change. They're going to realize that the blood calcium levels are now too high. In this case, our control center is the endocrine gland. Um, in this, it, whether it's the thyroid gland or the parathyroid gland, uh, we're not going all the way back to the nervous system. We're, uh, this is regulated through the endocrine system. So the thyroid gland is going to release a hormone called calcitonin, and this is going to cause the osteoblast to deposit extra calcium in the bones so that the blood calcium levels return to normal. So again, the thyroid detects that calcium levels are high. It then makes the decision to, processes this information, makes the decision to release calcitonin. Then that causes the osteoblast to uh, deposit the extra calcium into the bones. If our calcium levels in our blood are too low, that can be dangerous because we need calcium for things like muscle contraction, uh, nerve impulse conduction, blood clotting, um, and so we need to raise these calcium levels. Again, we're going to get this from the bone. So receptors in the parathyroid gland sense the decrease in blood calcium levels. The parathyroid gland is going to process these new levels, make the decision to release parathyroid hormone, or PTH. Parathyroid hormone is going to be released, which causes the osteoclast to break down bone in order to free up that calcium into the blood. So again, calcium levels are too high, receptors detect it, and the end result is that uh, the extra calcium is going to be deposited by the osteoblasts to build new bone. If calcium levels are detected as being too low, then we're going to have um, the osteoclasts break down the bone in order to release calcium into the blood to be used for other things by the body. So that is a quick overview of the initial growth and then development of bone.